Are you a uh, or depth chart guy, like in terms of uh, going into game one every season, or does that speak to the competition this particular season? Uh, probably a combination of both things. You know, if you have a clear-cut returning starter that – um, has kind of earned the right to, to be listed first. I think there's some time and place for that. But us being a new staff and, and not having the same time to evaluate, you know, no spring ball and really working through all fall camp, you know, just kind of how I felt a couple weeks ago. I didn't feel like there was any reason to rush or put anything out there too early. Um, so we're going to kind of continue to let guys fight through the week and, and see where things fall. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Hey, Brennan. Uh, so I want to get your thoughts on Travis Jay. He's listed as a co-starter at both the return positions. I guess to have that athleticism to where you could say punt returner, kickoff returner potentially. I guess what has he done in camp to, to stand out in that regard? Well, number one, you know, with Travis, he's a natural ball catcher. You know, he, he just kind of has a knack, whether it's in the punt return game or kickoff return game, to really put himself in position, you know, in terms of judging the ball and, and its depth. Uh, and, and he catches the ball really well with his hands. You know, obviously, as a, as a high school player, um, he was super talented, um, you know, with the ball in his hands. And we just feel like as a team that if we can find ways to, to give him opportunities in the return game, that would be good for us. Um, but there's, a, there's several guys back there that are getting work, and, and I think you'll end up seeing more than one guy back there throughout the course of this game and really out throughout the course of the season. So uh, Trav is one of those guys that's really stood out to this point, but, but there's, you know, several guys who've really done a nice job. Good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon. I want to ask you about the uh, looking at your uh, your oars on the um, on the return team. The guys, you know, you got some of the guys you got listed there: Travis, Jay, Jay, Sean, Ladanian are all listed as starters offensively or defensively as well. Is that ever a concern for you or uh, Coach Norvell that you know you've got guys or potential key starters playing on special teams that are always like you're going to put the best guy there regardless? Well, from from a program uh, philosophy standpoint, we are going to put the best guys out there to, to give us an opportunity. But we're always going to be smart in how we allocate the reps. So um, that's one of the reasons that you have ORs listed. That, that that's a sincere kind of genuine approach to it. It's not that we're necessarily hiding something. Um, if if Jay Sean's getting a ton of touches at, at running back, maybe it is Trav that's going to get the next return. Or if if uh, LaDamian's getting a bunch of touches, then maybe it's Jay Sean. So we have that flexibility that, that depending on how many reps that you're getting on offense or defense, that we have multiple people we feel like we could use in the return game. And uh, we're going to be able to, to do it a little bit by committee uh, because of the roles that guys are playing on offense and defense and feel like there won't be a drop off uh, no matter who we put out there. Coach, you know, you'll be coaching the defensive ends, and, and the offense is going to be on the field. Uh, and you got to coach your defensive ends, but you also have to kind of be mindful of, of like, punting and having to roll out there. Just how, how do you balance, and it's not new for you, but how do you go about balancing those sort of duties that are going on simultaneously? Oh, that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, and that can be a little bit challenging throughout the course of the game. I think probably the one for me that, that can be the most challenging is when we have our punt pressure unit because we're, we're going to be on defense, obviously, uh, and then transition immediately into a special teams play. But, um, you know, you kind of have your plan for that going into it. Uh, you know, this, like you said, isn't the first time I've gone through it. So uh, you just got to be really aware on the sideline. You know, when you're making corrections, you know, when the offense is on the field, uh, you got to kind of always have one eye on the down and distance because you got to have the punt team ready. And then uh, when we're on defense, you got to have in your mind kind of as third down is going, you know, what your thoughts are for pump pressure. So you got to kind of be a multitasker. But, uh, you know, probably the two easier units are the kickoff cover and kickoff return because there's always kind of a, a break there uh, when you have a change of possession. But, um, no, you're right. But, it, it, you know, it's something that I have a lot of experience doing. But it does take, you know, an ability to kind of switch gears really fast. Uh, we haven't seen the kickers since you know we saw them briefly in the spring. Um, I know Parker's got a really strong leg. Would there be any, and I don't know how that compares to Ryan because we haven't seen him as much at this level, but would there be a situation where one guy might be a, more likely in longer distances or shorter distances, or is it going to be one guy? You know, right, ideally you'd like it to be one guy because, um, you know, what – what you don't really want to do is have a guy's guessing when they're when it's their opportunity to go in based off of a field position. Um, we're always going to put ourselves in a position to 
to have the best opportunity to make the kick. So, you know, we're never going to sacrifice that aspect of it. But uh, with Ryan's leg, uh, yeah, Par- Parker's well known in terms of his leg strength, but Ryan has, has a very strong leg himself. So I don't think we're going to have to do it that way uh, if, if Ryan ends up being the guy that, that takes a lot of those reps. But, you know, some of that's still obviously to be determined, and we're going to kind of let that play out and go. But I, to, to, your, to your question, uh, I don't think we're going to be rotating based on, on length. You've coached with Nick Saban, and you've coached with guys that are not Nick Saban. Uh, not trying to say that Coach Mike Norville might be a Nick Saban, but just when you've been around a guy like Nick Saban, you see how organized he is, how meticulous, how maniacal he kind of approaches every sort of thing. I guess that's what we call coaching. But what does that do for the confidence of, of 18, 19-year-old, 20-year-old kids when they have a coach who's so detail-oriented? And does Mike kind of bring that sort of comfort, you think, so far, looking at these kids practicing and getting prepared? Well, you know, I think co- the way Coach Norvell approaches everything, um, I think he brings confidence the, to the entire organization. You know, that's coaches included along with the players just because there really is no stone that, that is unturned in terms of preparation. You know, we have a plan for every contingency that could happen in the game. Uh, we went through our, our mock game the other day and uh, every situation that could possibly come up um, – you know, we go through. Um, coach has a plan, and it's always, you know, in, in my you know time with him, it, it appears that every plan is a really well thought out plan. So, I think when when you have a guy like that who's in charge, it should breed confidence not just amongst the players but the entire organization that no matter what happens uh, in the game on a Saturday, we're going to be prepared for it. We're going to have an answer for it, and and we'll be able to adjust and adapt on the fly. I think this will be a first in my career asking a question about a potential backup long snapper. Um, but what does it say about uh, Garrett that you know Grant's returning and it seemed like he did a really good job last year? Uh, what have you seen from Garrett to actually have that be a real competition? Well, so uh, you know, one thing is is I feel like we are blessed with with two really capable guys. Um, but you know, the, from our mindset from the day that we came in all the way to this point now has been uh, we were going to let guys compete. And you know for whether it's the kickers and, and charting every kick that they take or it's the long snappers and charting every snap that they that they snap uh, we're gonna let the guys battle it out and compete and you know the the numbers are going to be the numbers you know I know uh, you know there's times where guys ha- who have experience and you know that could weigh into to the equation somewhere but um, you know we feel like if, if a guy has earned the right to play that's how it should be you know this should be a meritocracy in, in every way so um, Garrett's done a really good job so so, uh, you know, I think he's put himself in a position where, you know, he deserves that or on the on the depth chart, and we'll, we'll kind of make a decision and run with it from there. All right. Thank you, Coach. Awesome. Thank you, guys.